Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. 10 out of J, man. I'm rocking with y'all like y'all rocking with me. Big shout out to everybody that got the Instagram, the 10K. I appreciate it. You know I've been trying to get that little swipe up feature, so we in there. We rocking. We're going to keep putting out new content. We're going to keep the channel going, you feel me? This video right here is going to be about my brother, Mad Max. Me and Mad Max never got to meet face to face. Meaning we were never in the same, you know, dorm together where we could move around. I actually only saw him in confinement. So when I originally hit Appalachia CI, I was still doing my 290 sentence in confinement that I got from Lancaster CI. Bro heard that I was in there. He shot me a kite. And I mean, it's crazy, right? I know y'all, y'all gonna get excited when y'all see shit like this, but, um, like I told y'all, I never threw out none of my mail, and I never threw out the kites either. This is actually the kite that Mad Max sent me the first time I ever communicated with bro. And um, I still got the whole kite years later, you feel me? That's real. More or less, bro didn't know me or nothing like that. He just heard about me. Shot me a kite, shot me a little bit of food, shot me some soap while I was back there. Got me right, because when you're in confinement, you don't have nothing, bro. You got to have the state toothpaste. They take your toothpaste. You got to have the state soap. They take your soap. So at the time in Appalachia, when you had Q dorm, which was confinement, Q4 was actually the JIT dorm. So Appalachia had a JIT dorm, but it wasn't a JIT compound. So if you got sent to Appalachia and you were under the age, I think it was 21, you had to be in the JIT dorm. This is the same JIT dorm that TK was in, Savage was in. See, a lot of y'all don't know this. My brother Savage that I got on my Instagram, SWM Savage, he actually knows TK and TK knows Savage better than I know Savage. They did time together in that JIT dorm. That's really TK's name was ringing just from that JIT dorm. Everybody knew about TK. And when I met Savage and I, you know, found out Savage knew TK, we all just, we all knew each other. Mad Max though, he really had a name like that. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was living like that in prison. I mean, he was doing his thing. But one thing I want to focus on in this video is once again, mental health. The reason being Mad Max, he's very violent, very violent. He's known for being violent. And in prison, being violent is like a social status. You want the most violent people in your squad. So you want the heavy hitters on your team. Mad Max was that, you know what I mean? 110%. Eventually, he actually ended up going to confinement and was moved into the same wing as me. So at the time, I was in two bottom of Q1, and I think he was in like cell five, you know what I mean, on the bottom tier. So we're only a couple doors down. We start talking to each other, whatever, whatever, right? Now, Mad Max, at first, he was in a cell by himself. Wasn't nobody in there with him, you know what I'm saying? So he's chilling, he's good, whatever, whatever. And he already has a name on this compound. I don't expect anybody to get put in a room with him and there'd be a problem. But they took this guy that was causing an issue in another wing, in a different quad of confinement, and they put him in the cell with Mad Max. This guy couldn't stop talking to himself. He would scream out randomly. He would just start hitting walls and kicking the door all this craziness. And this is like the worst type of person that you want in the cell with you. You don't want some crazy ass person in there because you're not going to feel comfortable. You know what I mean? If you're asleep, all of a sudden he jumps off and starts banging on stuff. You don't know if he's going to try to attack you. You don't know what is going through his mind because his mind is shot out. There is no finding understanding with a person like that. And you see it time and time again. A lot of these dudes that are being in Florida State Prison are supposed to be in mental health facilities. They shouldn't even be in prison. They're literally crazy. There's something that's wrong with their head. They can't function like normal inmates. And what's bad about that is in return, 
the inmates lash out on them. You know, a lot of guys will be as sympathetic as possible. And then you have some guys that they don't care. They got so much time. They're not trying to be around that. They don't want to be near that. So if you're in the dorm and you're causing issues and the guys are coming in and they're putting us on our bunks and whatever, they're locking us down because we got this one guy that's causing problems. I'm sorry to say, but he's most likely going to get hit up. Someone's going to hit him up just to get him out of the dorm, man, unless they make him go PC. But a lot of these dudes, they have no understanding. You can't speak to them. You can't say, hey, you either go PC or I'm going to stab you. He's going to be blah, 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 talking to himself. Like, out of there, it's just you have people that are literally mentally disabled inside of these prisons. And when you can't come to an understanding, it goes to violence. And people like that will get hit up. And on the other side of that, you'll have COs that when a CO is yelling at you or trying to, you know, just be an asshole to you, these COs will come across these mental patients and they won't be able to get any understanding. And in return, they punish them. They put them in confinement. Now this guy can't stop freaking out in confinement. Maybe he's claustrophobic, whatever it is. Now they're gassing them. Spraying him with gas, spraying him with gas, telling him to cuff up. He's not understanding. You can't get any understanding. So now they have to do a cell extraction. Now the squad goes in there, the Ninja Turtles and all the SWAT gear, and they're beating him up, whatever, whatever. And it's tough having to, you know, be around that and witness it because you feel bad for the person. You know that there's an issue. And you know that they're basically being abused. And they can't help it. But you really can't even stick up for that person because you can't communicate with that person. They're so mentally gone. Nothing you can do will help them. They're pretty much just lost in the system at this point. And if they have a release date, they'll get out and they'll most likely go right back because it's hot enough for a regular person that's perfectly fine mentally. I mean, I don't think anyone gets out of Florida State Prison perfectly mentally intact, but... You have people that get out and they find a way to make a means and live in society. And it's hard enough doing that for a regular person. Never mind someone that has severe mental issues. They ended up putting a guy that had mental issues and was causing problems in another quad in the cell with Mad Max. Now, the COs, the sergeant, because they worked confinement and they worked cute on him, they knew Mad Max. So they knew the type of person he was. They knew how he caused trouble. They knew him fighting, stabbing, whatever it was. And I mean, if you're in Q4 in the JIT dorm, you go to confinement, you literally just go across the hall to Q1. That's it. You know, so they knew. You can't tell me that they didn't know what they were doing when they put that man in the room with Mad Max. And I mean, when he first got in there with him, it wasn't an issue. But I mean, dude starts banging on the doors, banging on the walls, saying this, that, and the third, just screaming out, yelling out, singing out. Like, it was annoying for us just being a couple cells down. And I knew that, you know, eventually he was gonna, he was gonna do something. And he shot me a kite. And he was like, bro, I can't, I can't take this here. I can't, I can't stand being in a room with him. He tried to talk you know, to the sergeant and say, can I get him moved out or can I get moved out? And the COs, man, they create such a dangerous environment, like I say over and over, where you could be trying to go PC and say you're scared for your life and they're going to tell you, oh, well, you don't look like you're dying. You don't look like you're scared for your life. And they'll let situations play out. And there's been plenty of inmates that have died from COs not being responsible for the inmates. At the end of the day, they're responsible for your safety. And they just keep it pushing. So what ended up happening was one night I go out for showers and I get taken to the top tier. You know, they're doing the bottom tier for showers first. So they put two people in the bottom shower. They take me, they put me in the top shower. So, you know, cell one, those two inmates go to the two showers on the bottom, cell two, which is mine. Me and my bunkie go to the top tier. While I'm in the top tier, I can see cell five where Mad Max is at. And, you know, he's sign language in me. And he's telling me, he's like, I can't be in the room with him no more, bro. I'm finna pop it off. 
And I was just like, you know, what am I supposed to tell you? Like, no, don't do it. Keep up with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Max got time. Max doing time right now. And I just, I know how he is. You feel me? I know what I've heard about him. And I know what's going to happen. So he did it, you know? He popped off on dude. And him and dude, there wasn't really a big size difference. Max is like six foot, six one. And uh, he's not like swole, but he's cut up a little bit. And, you know, at the time he was young. He was like my age, like, you know, 20s, early 20s. The other dude was probably like late 30s, maybe 40s, you know. And both of them are black, so it's not like a racial thing. They're both black. And Max just starts fighting. Boom, 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 boom. You know, when people fight in a cell, you, you can really hear it. You know, you can hear the walls and them banging off of everything. And when Max popped it off, he didn't do it when the CEOs was in there. So what will happen is they'll put us in the shower and the CEOs will go into another quad and do showers over there. So while we bathe, they're putting someone else in. And when they come back, they take us out, vice versa. They do two, uh, two quads at the same time. So, you know, he didn't do it in front of the police or nothing. But I mean, he beat this man so bad. To the point that by the time the CEOs came to his cell for showers and they popped the flap, they looked in and Buddy was laying on the floor and he couldn't get up. You know what I'm saying? He was just out of the... And they ended up cuffing up Max. You know, they opened up the door. Buddy's still on the floor. They put Max in the shower to hold. And they called the backup squad. You know what I mean? They had to escort Buddy up out of the cell and... When they took his body off the floor, all you see is blood everywhere. You know what I mean? Max had blood on him. He had his shirt off. He had his pants on, obviously. He had blood on his pants. I couldn't see his hands because he was handcuffed. And all I just see is a ton of blood, you know, on the floor. And, you know, he he beat that man bad. I ain't even gonna lie. That man was leaking. When they brought him out, he was split. It was bad, but at the end of the day, the CEOs purposely did that. They took advantage of the fact that they knew Max was violent. You know, these mental these mental illnesses and these mental issues, it's not just, oh, he's retarded, oh, he's slow. You have people that are extremely violent because they have these mental issues. And I, I'm not able to say if Max was one of those people. I know that he's someone that went to prison very young and was put into a very violent environment and strived in it. You know what I mean? Like a lot of us do. We, we adapt to our environment. We become very violent because that's how it is in the environment. But it could have been further than that. They could have known that Max snaps easier than the next man and... But I mean, bro, it literally could have turned into Mad Max catching a body, man. He beat that man so bad and he didn't. The guy didn't die. But I just think about it. Like, where does that guy go from him? You know, he goes to medical, gets put into a different quad. He's still in confinement. It just makes you think there's so many people lost in the system. That have mental health disorders that aren't able to speak out for themselves. And all they do is become a victim in every place that they're in. And I'm not, I don't want to hear about, oh, Max is this and that, Max is that. Listen, you can't tell me nothing about what you would have done in that situation. You can't tell me how you would have just sat there and let that dude do something. Because if you just sat there, you could have became a victim. If you put up with him screaming and yelling, then he starts getting naked and wiping shit on the walls. And he jumps on top of you while you're in your sleep. Like, you don't know how far these things go. So don't start judging my brother and say this and that and the third about Max. The environment is created by the CEOs. The CEOs put him in there for a reason. They knew nobody would want to be in the cell with him. And they got exactly what they wanted. He was causing problems. They got him flipped. So the CEOs will use inmates against inmates. They'll put you in an uncomfortable environment to get the outcome that they want. It's a crazy world, man. I hope y'all don't got to go through this type of shit. But hey, 
Free Man Max. It's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.